Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show you all how we made our own fused glass cabochons that we sent out. This is my dog playing with her toy and it sounds horrible but this is life now. Um, how we made these cabochons for our February booty boxes and craft along kits as well as how we did this bead strung necklace which I'm gonna say needs some work but I wanted to go over how we made it with you guys that way hopefully I can learn about my pitfalls with y'all um, and get any advice that y'all might have to offer with how I could maybe have help had this be more of the final vision that I had for it so let's get started So I'm going to be starting out with a blend of one part black cost clay and one part silver Sculpey. I typically use Primo, but um, I used Sculpey 3 on this one, but it still works out. It's actually my favorite way of using using up my stash of Sculpey 3, which um, is not the greatest. Like It's really easy to work with, but it cracks and is very brittle once it's baked. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's not my favorite, but the cost clay makes it much more durable and flexible. And it's just, I just needed to use it up and get that nice silver color. So I'm going to be passing this through our pasta machine at a thickness of five. And I do have my oven preheating to 275 degrees. And you can see we've got some air bubbles and stuff here. And I'm just going to be coming through and whomp, cutting that open letting the air out because we are going to keep conditioning this just a little more but i have my oven preheating because most ovens will kind of have a flare up in temperature to get up to temperature and then it'll calm down and be at 275 so if you put your clay in in a cold oven with it on the preheat more often than not if you're getting scorching that might be uh, something to look at so there we go we have a nice, very thin bit of polymer clay. And these are the cabochons that we were sending out in our February booty boxes and craft along kits. Um, any extra that we have, uh, we will be listing into our shop updates. Um, for at the time of recording, it'll be in March 2023, but hopefully uh, this video will be useful to folks far into the future. So. Um, Whenever we have cabochons, we put them for sale on Mondays on our shop. So <laughs> that's all that is. But I do want to come through, and I'm just using some similarly sized cookie cutters, which everything that I'm using here will be linked down in the video description. And you can also find our recommended tools um, over on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Um, and that's for like, uh, we have our toolkit over there and that's a curated list of all the different, like my favorite pliers, my favorite, like the little silicone mat that this is on will be in. And we've got a, a toolkit for 
gosh, wire wrapping, chain mail, polymer clay, resin casting, leather working. Basically, if I've dabbled in it, I've got a toolkit for it. And it's a lot of it so that I can go back and reorder when I'm like out of Dremel tips or something. You're like, what did I use? Um, so it's kind of just um, my shopping list or recommended shopping list. So even if you go over there and you don't get what we recommend, it just it's to help you all get started shopping because sometimes that can be the trickiest bit. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any air trapped between the clay and the cabochon as we come through here, because I really want this to like bond well with the clay. Oh no, I smushed it. Okay, well, <laughs> it's very, very soft stuff, but I did want to make sure that there's no air trapped. It's nice and secure because this is our first layer just to give us something to bind to as we add the rest Ooh, i'm not very good at this part but that's okay you don't have to be good at it you just got to do it because you can always tidy it up just a little bit more with a craft knife there we go and there's very little waste in polymer clay. I mean, let's see, drop it on the floor and get it all full of dog fur, but even then you can use that as a bit of filler for inside of, you know, a sculpture or something. And, yep, just getting that smushed up and around. And then I'm gonna set it on the tile and then we'll bake it there. And I'm gonna do that same thing twice more for these little moons. Now, whenever we have enough moons made that I can put some up on the website, um, we announce that in our shop updates. But currently I'm still working on getting to where I'm consistent with making these. But um, there'll have been video of how we made, like, all month I've been working on this, so it's hard for current Vaughn who's recording to fathom what future Vaughn will have edited of past Vaughn's work. So it's, hopefully, in this video you'll have seen how we make our cabochons. So I'm, while we didn't send these out in the kits, I am really excited to show you guys uh, some different ways of working with them. Now, if you have like resin moons, I don't necessarily recommend baking those just because sometimes resin bakes just fine and sometimes it's disastrous. And I have not figured out the difference between the two situations. Sometimes it comes out wonderful, sometimes it's a mess. So I just don't uh, full with it. If I'm using a resin piece, I just leave the heat alone. Now you could make your own little moons out of uh, polymer clay though. In those you can bake all you want. So now again, I've kind of cut out the shape. Not perfect, but it didn't need to be. And we are just coming through again, making sure that there's no air trapped, pinching off any extra of the polymer clay. Very nice. Poke, 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 smush, smush, smush. And now after we get this adhered, we can carve or scrape or sand what is on here a lot more easily because it's such a soft clay. Oh, that's the oven preheated. So just removing some of that excess material. Just coming around the edges. And we could even, I think it was just some of the tutorials I've seen. Oh, that works so much better. <laughs> Cause she'll do this thing where she like uses her finger and like drags on her cabochons that she makes out of polymer clay. And it's so, that's probably the most successful I've ever been at doing that little trick that I learned from watching her videos. But yeah, and that just made a nice little, it's not perfect, but it's better. <laughs> I mean, it's all stuck to my skin now too, though. Let's see if we can do that on the inside. Womp. Eh, it's not the worst. I think a firmer clay would, uh, yield better results and I do want a little bit wrapped up around the edge because um we're going to be making a two or three hole strung like component out of you know our glass and clay here is the goal 
and then I'm pressing it to make sure it's nice and flat on the back. Okay, let's do that again on this one. See how that goes. So just smush, 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 pinch, pinch, pinch. Making sure no air bubbles are trapped. You could also use maybe some liquid polymer clay, um, but honestly, I think this is going to be fine because this is not our final. Um, this is not our final form. <laughs> um, as we come through and add layers to this, there is going to be more polymer clay wrapped around onto the front of our moons and uh, cabochon. Oh, they're all moons, I guess. Um, that one's just a full moon. Well, fully new, but still. I think you get what I mean. Whereas, if we were making... If this were the only clay work that I were doing, I would probably have more have left more hugging around the front. And again, just using my finger. Smush, smush, smush. Pet, pet, pet. Oh, that comes out really nice. I like that. Good results with the petting. That sounds weird. Never mind. <laughs> And I do want to make sure to not be neglecting the tips of the moon, the little moon crescent. Oh, too far. Oof. A softer clay is so much more challenging to me than a firmer one. But it might just be because, you know, I've been working with firm clay here lately. So let me know down in the comments. Do you have an easier time sculpting with a softer clay or with a firmer clay? Or do you use some things for some applications and some for others? Because I, I bet that's probably, there's probably situations where firm clay shines and others where you want something more malleable. Okay, so we're gonna pop these into the oven. 275 for like 15 minutes. We've pulled our baked first bake out of the oven and let it cool to handling which really doesn't take that long especially if you get them off the hot tile when they get stuck and I'll show this on the next batch I come through and I just use my tissue blade to pop them off of the tile and I don't mind the little shiny bits um, for now but we've rolled out on the thickest setting that blend of polymer clay and I'm gonna come through and I want to use a cutter that's just a little bit larger. You can see how it has that perimeter around our cab. I wouldn't want to use something that's, you know, too confining. And I go ahead and do this directly on the tile I'm going to bake on. Typically I keep two of these tiles so I can have one that's cooling and one that I'm working on. And then I'm going to actually, I used up the last of my scrap wire, but I'm using three 18 gauge segments. And I just wanted something that would be accommodating of the beading wire that I'm using, and 18 gauge certainly does that. So, and I just want these to be large enough that, um, they'll exceed the uh, oh, diameter, yes, of our circle. And straighten it out just ish. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. But I would like to get the spacing the same, or at least similar, on both of our moons, because, you know, from, from mirror imaging each other. And so I'm going to come in, and what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that where the wires are exiting is not exceeding the tips of our moon. And so again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I am going to come in here. Oh, and another thing before we get too carried away. So I do want to get my moon down and then I do want to use this smaller cutter to remove that section of clay. I'm just balling up and setting off to the side as scrap. Okay, so now we can put 
the wires on. And again, I want to make sure that they are not exceeding our moon. And this is the second of at least three bakes that we will be doing on this piece. There we go. And then we're going to position this and we are going to give this a really nice solid smoosh. And then we're going to kind of leave it there like this. Woohoo, this is sliding. <laughs> one of them caught the other one, so that's good. Oh, and I'm glad that I looked at it because sometimes a little bit of a change of perspective can do a whole lot in helping everything get nice and centered. So there's that one. And now we will do one more. Using our largest cookie cutter so far. Did I straight up lose? My dang, there it is. I'm always losing stuff, y'all. <laughs> like, uh, the, the crafting struggle is real and that's okay. Okay, so again, we're going to straighten out a bit more wire. Typically I use scrap for this, but I'm in the middle of like doing like a no scrap challenge. So I didn't have a whole lot of, um, I didn't have a whole lot of scrap to draw from. So here I am making scrap, but I plan on making quite a few of these necklaces, um, for listing up on our website and having in our booth at upcoming vending events. So I think it'll be all right. And again, just trying to get them, so I'll be able to use these pieces of wire specifically for this over and over again. And then, so we can make an executive decision here if we want, because my stone, my cabochon that I've made is not a perfect circle. And so we get to decide, do we want it oval on the vertical? or oval on the horizontal, and I kind of prefer the horizontal, but on your piece, you get to decide. There we go. And I'm just smushing that in, and while it was baking the first time, I did go ahead and do a little bit of, like, a drawing, um, in, ooh, oh, that made me see sick, um, in Procreate of how I had drawn it initially in my planner just one day, but then I traced back over it. And so we have our black reventry moons. I'm going to be making some little decorative components. I'd like to have some chain and then like some beads. Um, but yeah, so I'd kind of like to experiment with adding a little bit of scroll work. And I just use the light brush or the light pen on Procreate because it makes everything look so dramatic. Like look at, bam, like that layered vining effect. Oof. And it did all the hard work. All I had to do was doodle. And I had it on, like, symmetry, so I only had to draw technically half of the necklace. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, I'd like to, that's why I'm leaving this margin around our stones, is so that we have a little bit of space to play. But before I goober it up, I wanted to go ahead and get those wire lines installed. And I'm thinking about it. Yeah, we'll only do three bakes. So yeah, we're going to pop these into the oven for another 15 minutes, and I'll meet you guys back here. Okay, so they're still a little warm from the oven, but I'm going to show you, like, what I was talking about. We can just get underneath there, Oop, and it just slides it right up. And you can see that's quite shiny, but I don't mind it. You could use, like, a texture or something, like a rubber stamp to add texture if you wanted uh, prior to baking. But I thought this would be just fine. I didn't want to make it too complicated, my first polymer clay project in a while. So, there we are. I'm going to leave this tile off to the side to cool down the rest of the way. But now we get to start in with some of the fancy stuff. So that's how our necklace is starting to come together. <laughs> it's going to have the little... Hmm, both of them are a little offset to one side. So they're not perfectly mirrored, but they're going to have the little frame. Um, so let's go ahead and start... I actually want to start with making the two little beads for at the end of our project. So I'm going to do that by using this size cutter. Because 
because I wanted to make a little bit of a spacer bead where all of my wires, like all of my beading wire, uh, can join together without any sort of complications. So I may actually use some 16 gauge or just two lengths of 18 gauge wire. To do this on. Then you know really one length of 18 gauge should be fine. We'll see. If if the one length isn't thick enough, then um, we can always just use that as the guide for drilling it out a little farther. So I do want to make it as a coin bead. So that's why I've cut a front and a back for both of these. And again, I like to just work on whatever surface I'm going to be baking on. That way, especially with the softer clay, I don't have to worry about any, um, you know, deforming the shape of it or anything. Although it's pretty wrecked already. Um, <laughs> well, at least whenever I'm done doing the shaping and stuff, then, you know, I don't have to worry about goobering it up further from there. So I had intended to make some really cute little, like, uh, Black Aventurine cabochons for in this. We didn't quite get there this month. Maybe next time. But, so for now, I'm just shaping it and joining and blending that line. And then I'm going to come through with, this is a 5mm ball stylus. And I'm just going to be tapping. Adding in a little bit of a hammered metal texture really focusing on making sure that that line is joined, the seam between the two. I'm gonna... Yeah, especially here. And we're just gonna get this all sorts of distorted and stuff, because I kind of, I don't really know, like, I mean, I drew out that plan, but mm, I don't know if that's what, gonna be what happens today. <laughs> We'll have to see where the sculpting takes us. And that's okay. It's okay to have a plan and abandon it. Let's zoom in a little tighter so I can wander out of frame. <laughs> I really don't mean to wander out of frame, y'all, whenever that happens. But I'm just poking. Poke, poke, poke. Smush, smush, smush. Blending out that seam. Especially around where the wire is going through, I want to make sure that that area is not being neglected. And they're just making some happy little, like, little hunks. Oh my god, I did wander out of frame. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> and now we could use all sorts of different tools and things to try to leave cool indentations on these but I have one tool in particular that is a leather working tool this is called a cedar like there's now it needs cleaned up a little bit because it has some epoxy sculpt in there so I think I may use this one which here on some scrap you'll be able to see How it leaves just a little like donut shape. I don't know, that one came out. Eh, I'm glad I tested them because that's not really what I'm looking for. I love it. I love it for you know what that tool typically does on leather, but I'm not quite digging it as much for here on the polymer clay. There we go. So it just makes a cool little indent. And so let's test it out. Get it nice and centered and and it just makes that little ring around and now we can actually we can smush that a little better there we go and then because I'm hoping that it'll start to smooth it out and that'll give us some really nice contrast and texture hmm I wonder if we could come in here and kind of pack it with some clay and then place it whole oh, look at that 
<laughs> oh, that's neat. Okay, so I'm going to pack it with some more clay. And then we can scrape off the excess, but we don't want too much excess scraped off. Like, we want it to be a little pokey outy, right? Oh man, I'm really worried that I crammed that one in there too well. Let's see. Oh, it still pulled out. Cool. Uh, if we'd put some water, or let's be real, if I had like gotten my finger wet in my mouth and put that in there, then um, it, it would have come out a little cleaner. Yeah. So now we've got a nice little daily bob with some different textures going on. And I'm actually going to use a smaller texture tool, like a smaller round. This is three millimeters, I do believe. And I'm just going to add in just a little bit more. Um, and I'm doing this close to like the table. Let me change angles. Okay, let's try this out for a little bit. I hope I'm not yelling in your ear or too quiet. So yeah, just coming through with the three millimeter. And I'm adding these because we're gonna be doing an antique wash of like just some black acrylic paint on this. And I really want it to be brighter silver up on the top and much darker around here lower down so if I add more texture that gives us more area for that to settle into and it's also going to help us to look a little bit more donutty or something I don't know why I said it like that y'all <laughs> oh my gosh it has been such a wild week we have been mourning the loss of a beloved family member um, still recovering from being on the road, um, just kind of trying to piece our life back together after what was, oh gosh, the wildest weird year we've ever had that we haven't really had a chance to process. So it's just been, it's crazy and I'm so happy to be back here. Oh no, is the tip, the tip is, it's not broken, it's just bent weird. Okay, I'll use the other end. This little corner of the craft room that I'm currently crafting in is where we started um making videos every day back in 2016 and so it almost feels like just coming home <laughs> like I wandered through the whole rest of the house but now I'm back here and it's like uh almost like visiting um visiting an apartment from years ago or visiting it's just especially with like the drawers here on the background and stuff like let me see yeah, like how these drawers are like this. That's like kind of old school. You know, what we had been doing all those years ago. And it's just, it's kind of wild. And through everything, I'm very happy. To just be rolling with the punches, taking it in stride. Even the burden's heavy. I'm still happy to carry it. Just the burden of, gosh, the daily grind. Of all the things to complain about right like <laughs> but it's just sometimes it gets a bit much and that's okay and it's been a minute since I've come and crafted it out with y'all so yeah I've used a porcupine quill to just add a little bit more texture and I decided I didn't like it but I mean the sky is the limit like it makes it look like y'all like a biscuit like ignore the weird part of actually that's a pretty darn good cookie like one of those thumb drop print cookies like thumbprint cookies mm. I haven't had carbs in a while. <laughs> I don't know if that's obvious, but I'm fixing to eat this polymer clay. Don't eat polymer clay. Certainly if it has wires sticking out of it too. Okay. I think this is going to be as good as it gets. Now I am definitely going for an organic look here on these guys. So, but you could make yours very crispy and like clean lines and all sorts of stuff. Mine are going to look like, uh, ooh, Hardee's biscuits. The, have you all been to the restaurant chain Hardee's? Like, I don't much care for their, like, rest of the day food, but for their breakfast, it is hard to beat their biscuits. You know, if you're going to be eating fast food or something. It's 
see I, uh, well it kind of needs the since I had done the texture over here it's lacking it over on the uh, the second piece so we're still gonna come in poke 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 with the little porcupine quill Ooh, oh well okay well something something that we could do that a needle or a t-pin or um, a bit of wire or a porcupine quill like how I'm using here um, we could come in and like carve little designs in and I may actually try that just on a like a little bit of scrap clay just to see what happens because we may love it but yeah adding these significantly deeper dots is going to give us in theory um a much more dramatic gradient to um I mean we could also just manually paint it in but I'm in a sculpting mood dang it I'm gonna poke stuff I keep thinking about taking pottery classes. And the closest one I can find to where I am is like at the local college, so it's like a huge time commitment. So I don't know, we'll have to figure it out. But this makes me think of all the sculpting videos I've been watching for like pottery and stuff. Okay, right. Here's a bit of scrap. I'm gonna smush it. You know, I'm going to make it a little bit more accurate. Now this one doesn't have a wire through it, but it is at least going to have been the same starting thickness. So we're going to take this, and we're going to poke, 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 poke. Now I am going to just skip poke in the middle altogether too. Just to see what kind of effects that gets us. Kind of want to just make it look like a little rock. Rock, rock, rock. There we go. I do like the way it looks better with the little bit of clay added too. I am like official on that one. Totally digging it. Yeah, I love it. Oh, and that would be such a great way of adding like a little scoop of ice cream for like miniatures, you guys. Oh my god. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> um right. We're taking I'm still gonna I'm gonna grab my other porcupine quill. Because sometimes this one has an exceptionally fine tip. But it's offset so i don't know maybe that would be better for for uh doing little designs with yeah i actually kind of really like the offset but we can just come around and scratch out a little pattern today i'm just doing a little swirly and if it gets a little crummy looking that's okay i'm gonna grab this bit of scrap and use that to clean any excess off. Ooh, it's all goopy and weird. I mean, that's pretty neat, though. And then we can widen it out. I don't know. I don't think I need to do that today. But I'm definitely going to do that on something. Oh, and it looks like an eye if you squeeze it oh my gosh y'all that is so cool well I have to save that forever now that's just the neatest little thing <laughs> like how cool is that that could be like a whole sculpture of its own and look at the way that that sculpt like that scratching well we learned a thing anyways Okay, so now, let's figure out what we're going to do with these. Alrighty, we're back in an overhead position so that I could move my hands freely um, instead of functioning around a tripod. And I'm just scooching that off to the side. And here we have our clay, still rolled out to the thickest setting. I actually need to, let's... 
Okay, so we've gotten that rolled back out on the thickest setting and it's still just so sticky, but that's gonna be fine. We're gonna come through and cut a straight line. Set that off to the side. And then I'm coming in quite close. I'm trying to do it the same three millimeter thickness that the clay itself is. That way it turns into like a square uh, dowel almost. Nice sharp edged and I'm gonna leave that there to cool and stiffen up. That's why I really like this marble surface too is it's, it's uh, three quarters of an inch thick. Um, but it's nice and cool all year round. So even in the summer, um, it helps cool my clay down and keep it a little stiffer. I, I like being able to have some options with temperature control. Hmm. Well, I guess we may not need a whole lot like that. So I'm gonna... This is one option, y'all. And since we've already baked these and they're not going to be gooey and sticky on the back we can come in just a little tighter and I actually think well no let's not smush it yet because we could bring this around this away and have like a cool bezel like that but I really think I'm just gonna roll it together And then start to roll out a snake. And then we're actually going to take this, and this is why we have left our um, wires in place. But we're going to take this, and I'm just going to smush the heck out of it, y'all. Like, I mean, and it's going to look, I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to look messy. <laughs> But that's okay. I want to expand past this point here, this seam where it's joining, and I don't want to neglect between the wires as well. Don't worry about the messy front right now. Like, I can hear y'all worrying about that. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. Like, don't you, like, it's actually better for you to overlap quite a bit and this is a great way on this cabochon to shape correct how it's oval like we're going to be utilizing the fact that that's there later sometimes the perfectionist in us can make us think oh no it has to be this certain way and it's like sometimes you got to trust the process and that's what I tell myself when I'm freaking out <laughs> But I am just going to be doing this dotting texture as a way of intentionally blending this seam all the way around. So I've come around full circle now. And we're going to take a cutter that is the size of what we want the face of our moon to be. I'm going to position it, try to position it, um, ideally, but again, it's not the end of the world. And I like to use the pressure point of release to be the face of the cabochon. That way I'm not distorting the rest of the design. And then again, I'm going to lift it by the wires so that I'm not distorting anything. And I'm going to very carefully... remove this ridiculously sticky. I should not have mixed this with so much of the Sculpey 3, I think. But yeah, just coming around, scraping that. And this gets me a bezel look that is like so much more accurate than what I could do freehand, y'all. Just using a cutter like that. And you can do that with teardrop, teardrop shape, with square hearts would be really cool and you can get a cookie cut setter oh cookie cutter set um uh, and just round and then use some pliers and get vices and get creative with it and make your own shapes of 
metal cutters. I think I have a video of that from years ago, but it may be worth readdressing because I'd made like a kitty ear one and a heart one and it was, it was a lot of fun actually. Okay, so coming around, cleaning it up. We're trying to. And we're actually touching a little on polymer clay that had already been baked into there. So, like uh, the initial wrap of the cabochon. So now I'm actually going to come through and we're going to do, I'm going to goober it up a bit, but with a stiffer clay, I think that would have come out much cleaner, but it did get the face of our stone to where we can make it be a little bit more wild and unruly. As we come through, I'm using the three millimeter on the edge in the front. And think of it as like, um, these don't necessarily have to be earth moons. That view might be seen elsewhere in space from different surfaces of different planets. So maybe this one, this moon has a whole bunch, even more so than our moon. A whole bunch of crater marks. That, and I mean, it's a fun necklace. It doesn't have to be like astronomically correct or anything. Um, so there is that. And now I'm going to use the five millimeter to texture our high points. And I actually, I recommend this a lot if, whenever I teach. It's been a long time since I've taught in person polymer clay, but whenever I teach, I, I, I teach a, an organic style because it's really easy to get fun, rewarding results that look really good for like your first project to take an organic route. It's like drawing a tree. Nobody's, you know, there's no way to draw a tree like within certain parameters. You can't draw it wrong because tree, trees, trees grow every single which way. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be tongue tied today, but you know, it's like, what'd you make? A rock. That rock doesn't look right. It's like, rocks can look like anything. <laughs> it's a better example, maybe. But yeah, so there's a little moon. Poke, poke, poke. Really digging that one. And we're going to set that off to the side. And now I'm going to do that same thing to both of our crescent moons. So I've done one of the moons so far, and uh, I'm not going to lie, the bezels of these are coming out much bulkier than I had imagined, but that's alright, it is what it is. Um, and I have some ideas of something else that we might do, uh, just even more layers. So we are gonna roll this out, and we're gonna smush this down and I'm just lining this up with this inner crescent line on the moon so just right there and then we're gonna take this other piece and press that in like that and so now from here we're using our th the pad of our thumb to press that clay flat against the moon and the baked bezel. I've found, and again, I've had no formal training with sculpting or anything, so if there's like a proper way of doing this um, that would make my life easier, please let me know down in the comments. Because, <laughs> uh, gosh, it'd be nice to, uh, to know what I'm doing. But um, anyhow, it's... Uh, this seems to be having a structure to give me something to build against really helps me to, uh, you know, rather than just sculpting this whole shape out of what feels like nothing. So I don't know which way is like proper or correct, but 
this is what we're doing it. And now I'm using a different part of the pad of my thumb to drag the clay down off the surface of the moon. And so that gave us a really nicely defined edge. And then, oh well that just worked out nicely, but my thumb is crescent moon shaped there on the tip. And we can move the clay in both directions too. It doesn't, you know, you can almost control Z a little bit and just smush it right back into place. So. Now that we've shaped that, I'm going to come in with the same cutter we had originally used, and I'm going to press. You can see how it looks in there, and then I'm going to drag. Oop, ah, well that didn't work out perfectly, but that'll be fine. And then I'm just going to clean that by smushing it onto some scrap clay. And now I'm just coming in with the edge of my knife my craft time. And just kind of opening that up a little bit on the inside where I can't reach my fingers. And then from here, I kind of delaminated that. I didn't mean to, but well. <laughs> um... We can start just dragging this down along that edge. Now we have quite a bit of excess clay, but that's okay. So again, we can just kind of sculpt and shape, and then we can even kind of cut away in between these wires like that. And just kind of petting with your finger smooths out those um, fingerprints, craggles, any weird little textures. You can really do a lot to give it a really nice surface. And always be mindful that, you know, the clay may be distorting one direction more than another, so try to work in both ways. Like, trade the piece hands and look at it from a different angle. And then we can come in, clean up this edge again. And now we can come through and clean out any edges any further with that three millimeter ball stylus again. Coming around on the edge. Trying to be nice and random. You can try like, um, if it helps you to have a formula to follow, you can go hard, medium, light, medium, hard, medium, light, medium, hard, like, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, light, medium, hard, light, medium, hard in texture, and that'll leave different um, sizes of, of little dots that we're stippling in here. And um, I also like to move in a little bit of a circular pattern or try to make it as random as intention can be. And sometimes I'll go back over other spots. Just use your own artistic eye to decide what you like and what you don't like because there's no right or wrong way to do the thing. And now coming around on the front edge as well. Because coming up next is our is my favorite part actually the adding well I really I love every aspect of this but I do particularly enjoy applying the mica powders so again we have a little bit and then with the three millimeter and then we're gonna come back in with the five and you could use the end of a dowel and sandpaper and make your own 
little tips like you know put it into a pencil sharpener and then sand it down you could make your own texturing tools out of polymer clay just all sorts all sorts of different ways so there we are with that and there's both of those I guess rather more accurately but I'm digging it and now we can either roll out just little snakes <laughs> or we could use an extruder is an option but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do the little by hand snakes I think because we can roll it out the way that we did and then start encouraging one end into a nice little spiral And we can come and we can kind of tap that down. Whoop, stuck to my finger. One that's very, very sticky. So I don't actually think I'm going to be diving into that today because I, I would need a firmer clay to get those finer details, I think. And this stuff's just way too, uh, you can see it's sticking to me, way, way too sticky. So I think we'll leave it like this. Um, we could in lay wire into it though. I don't know, not today. Um, <laughs> I'm going to mica powder this. Let's see. Ooh, what color? Here we have some silver, which I think should be a nice bright high tone compared to what we're working with. And I'm just rubbing it onto my fingertip. You could use like a makeup sponge or something as well. And then I'm just rubbing over the high points. And it may get onto the glass and if it does, that's okay. Let's zoom out a little farther. I dip my finger and then I burnish it in, in the lid. You could also use, um, you could use rub and buff and different things like that, but I would recommend doing those after you have baked for the final time. Um, just, I'm doing it now the way that I am prior to baking because I'm taking advantage of the stickiness of the clay to make it grab on to the uh, mica powder. And there we've got that nice silvery sheen. And we're going to do that to our moons. Just rubbing lightly. I don't want to cram the mica powder down in to what we're doing. Though if we do, I'm going to be adding an antique anyways. So it's not the end of the world if the... Uh, your pigment falls down into the crevices but also you could have just as easily if you don't have mica powders or um, would prefer to not use them hmm those guys we're gonna have to do on the on the tile because they're pretty squished on there but uh, you could just do this with paints as well because instead of doing the mica powder and then applying an antique we could have gone the route of um, painting it black or whatever you know undertone we wanted to use I was going with a black and silver theme so it looked like the black of entering and silver moonlight and stuff but um you know, paint it whatever darker under color you would like and then you could highlight it with the silver dry brush but I didn't want to have to do a ton of cleanup work and um, with the glass I'd have to clean all of that dry brushing off of the glass as well I'm going to set this little guy off to the side because I think we may sculpt something a little further on uh, with that. I am going to add just a little bit of a silver burnish to the eye of that. It's hard for me to see it as anything else after that other one. Okay. 
there we go and now into the oven for 15 more minutes good morning y'all it is the next day and we have these pulled out of the oven and they've cooled overnight and it is just a, a wonderful ooh, there goes the light it is a beautiful rainy day today so i'm hoping to get to share some of the weather noises with y'all it's our first kind of not cold rain of the season which is always really nice it starts to feel like springs on its way makes the daffodils seem a little less crazy for blooming so early but that's just me okay so we're gonna grab our bent nose pliers and I'm just gonna take this wire and I'm gonna do a little bit of a twist Ooh, and pull it out and then I'm gonna come in and there I've zoomed out that way you can see maybe a little better but I, I had caught myself starting to try to tidy up the holes with the wire still in there and it's like man we can make life just a little easier on ourselves by removing the wire first and then we just kind of scrape it down I want to be real careful here at the tip there we go because I don't want to break these tips of the uh, clay now it is baked down well but I can still come in with a sharp knife and carve it there we go. Now let's pop these off of the off of the tile. And I'm gonna grab right there. Twist, twist, twist. Oh, heard something let go. There we go. With the nice bead hole all the way through. Now you could make these and then drill them after the fact, but I don't personally have a whole lot of success with that so I like this method and then I just save these little wires in a little uh, drawer specifically for this type of project or you can make them into something else it didn't really bother it <clears throat> okay and now for the big moon There we go. You can hear the click of it delaminating from the uh, from the polymer clay. There we go. And now we have components ready to be strung into a necklace. And we could even take this and we could sand it down. Um, we can do all sorts of different, like if you wanted it a little tighter of a shape, uh, you could sand it down and then, you know, use progressively finer grits of sandpaper to get it a nice, but that would remove a lot of the texturing. But if you wanted to be, <laughs> the dog found her squeaker toy. If you wanted to whittle away at some of the material, that is that is a way of doing it after everything's been baked. Okay guys, so I'm just using the same giant container of matte black acrylic paint that I've been using for like ages at this point. Um, and I have gone ahead and gloved up just cause it makes my life a lot easier. Um, it's easier to just rinse off the gloves and then to get all the paint and stuff out from under my nails so we're coming through and I am layering this on mega mega thick and then we are going to be using a cup of water and some paper towels to get this cleaned back up okay so here we have a little mason jar of water And just working over the mason jar I'm just scrubbing the high points with the brush and that's gonna kind of settle everything down and in and then I'm just gonna set that on a paper towel and we'll see in a moment how that looks as it dries because we can always go in and touch up a little bit more so again just making sure that I've got paint down in all the little nooks and crannies and especially now that the paint is more watered down 
on this one, let's try just using a little bit of paper towel to just blot off the higher surfaces. And so you can see how we made those smaller indentations. It really gives us some nice depth. And again, I'm gonna set that down. I'm not really noticing too drastic of a difference between one and the other. So really, the point of this is to demonstrate that there's not a right or wrong way of doing this. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna do one of these on camera with y'all, and then I'm gonna do the other two off camera. And you could paint the backs as well, but I kinda like to leave them just bare polymer clay. And so once I get that paint on there, you can see I haven't dipped in more paint, I'm just dipping in to the water. There we go, maybe this would be better. So here you can see how that nestled into the little dotted areas really nicely. And that's just by watering it down into a nice wash. And then I'm just using the paintbrush to lift the water away from the cab. There we go. And now I'm going to do that same thing. <laughs> you can hear the dog playing with their squeaker toy. It has a hole in it, so it just makes this like noise. But that's okay. She's having fun, so that's what counts. And I'm just smushing it into the low parts. Rinsing the brush. And then just kind of rubbing the wet brush over the surface of everything. And you can see how it's starting to reveal. Let's see if we can't put this under. It's starting to reveal the silver and the texture underneath all of that pigment. And that is how we do that. I'm gonna let these dry, seal them with a layer of Mod Podge hard coat. You could also use a Sculpey glaze or any sort of water-based acrylic glaze. Works really, really well with polymer clay. And I'm gonna let those dry and then we'll meet you over in our beading corner to get this strung up into its final piece. So uh, I'm kind of nervous. This is my first time beading a necklace like this, um, kind of on my own pattern. So I'm starting with, I'm using this fire line. I think that's what it's called. That's what I'm using. And I have it threaded up on some of the needles that I got in my um, Potomac bead box. I think I'm using a size 12. It's the smallest one in there. Um, and I'm going to make a little... Oh, Millie, I'm sorry. I had to take her toy away because she's been chewing on it and it's so loud. And I was like, just for while I'm recording. Um, but I'm going to start by stringing on, like, I'm going to do 10 into a loop and that'll be what we attach our chain to. And then I'm kind of alternating uh, these 4 millimeter obsidian, 3 millimeter uh, steel, and then these little spacers that came in the Potomac bead box as well. Their treasure edition um, and then some six millimeter just check glass and and you could have yours if you're following along with me laid out however you like but over here I've got three millimeter or no uh, 311 aughts on these small like black lined like they're clear with a black core and I absolutely love the way that they look but three of those on either side of our three millimeter steel. And then I've got a four millimeter bicone, three millimeter steel, and I've got that all along the top. So I'm gonna start by threading through that whole top layer. And we're gonna pop that into time lapse um, so that you can get a better idea of it and so I can give my doggy her chew toy back. So.
what I've done here is I did 10 seed beads, threaded through into a loop and then threaded through again, and then I still have this little bit of tail that I'm going to be sewing in it when it's all said and done. And we've threaded through that whole first line. And then whenever I got down to this end, I did the loop of 10 11 knots and um, looped through them again just to reinforce it a little bit more. And then I re-threaded back through all of these guys through to this component. And now I'm going to skip this section that I had set up for myself and I'm going to go ahead and go into the one, two, three of the size 11 and then the three millimeter and then whoop, that's the three millimeter steel, a four millimeter bicone, three millimeter steel, four millimeter obsidian, three middle millimeter, there we go, steel, bicone, oops, steel, and then one, two, three on the size 11 again. Now I'm concerned that this is going to be a little too long, but we can always undo it and you know, remove some. So I'm just threading the needle through the bottom of the three holes we had made. Oh yeah, that's way too long. <laughs> okay, um, and so in which case I'm just going to back it up through. And I think I'm gonna, hmm. So it looks like it's a bicone, a three millimeter and three eleven aughts too long. So I think I'm gonna take off the round obsidian. And just kind of shorten that whole thing down just a bit. So skip the obsidian altogether. And so we'll see how this comes together when it's all said and done. And there's the third bead. Yeah, that's still a little too long. Okay, so what I'm going to take an alternate approach and we are going to do five of the size 11. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And then a three millimeter steel, four millimeter bicone, three millimeter steel, and then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Hmm, I think I like that. Yes, let's try it. And so there we go through. Maybe just four beads and then four because it's not quite laying how I had hoped it would. And this is why we're experimenting. Okay. Still just sliding all that off. So we've got one, two, three, four. Because my hope is for this to sit, um, this necklace to sit not as a choker on the neck, but as like where it's draped over the collarbones at the nape of the neck. And so having that little bit of that expansion will let it sit in theory. We'll have to see how that actually pans out. I may only need one additional one. Let's go ahead and do four, just because I can always unthread it again. It's a disservice to ourselves to become impatient whenever we're doing art. Whether it's beading or painting or whatever you're doing, you should be try to be patient with yourself if you can. Okay, I can dig it. 
so now we will do one two three four in the of the eleven knots one of the three millimeter steel four millimeter bride cone three there it goes three millimeter steel oh I'm trying there we go and then we're gonna go one two three four and this is going to go through again the bottom hole in the component that we had made I think that's gonna look real pretty. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove my needle. Let's put some more um, fire line on here. And I only add about three feet at a time. There's no sense in getting all tangled up in the line. And I actually am interested in hiding the knot inside our focal component here. So I've pulled that out, if you can see. And let's see if we can't get our needle threaded. I feel clumsy. But it's okay. There we go. Maybe? Nope. Aha! Nailed it. <laughs> okay. And so now I don't have any hypo cement or anything like that, so I'm just going to do overhand knot. There we go. And again, I want it hidden inside the, uh, the moon. So I've wrapped twice around, and then putting my finger in. And tying again. Well, that's not going to be in the moon anyways, so that'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, nice and tight. And now we can sew back through our moon. And using that 18 gauge wire to make space really left us a lot of room though i need to trim the tail so i'm going to pull it back just a bit snip that and if you can see how those two little threads are hanging out the back but now whenever i pull they're hidden inside i think i like that and now we're going to keep up the same thing and since I skipped that one altogether, I can scavenge beads from it. So we've got one, two, and I only needed one from there, didn't I? So now we've got four of the size 11, the three millimeter steel, four millimeter bicone, three millimeter steel. One, two, three. Just loving how that's looking. And we're going to do one more size 11 before threading through our moon. Now from here, coming over, stealing a bead from over here. So there's one, two, three, four, three millimeter steel, four millimeter bicone, three millimeter steel, 
then one, two, three, four. And we're gonna thread through our component that we made out of clay. And we're gonna thread back up through. Yeah, let's go all the way down to the end. I just wanna beef it up a little bit. I'm a little paranoid that, you know, this, this thread feels so delicate. I mean, it says it has, you know, four pound test weight, if that's anything like fishing line. Um. So, I mean, it should be fine, especially with me having doubled up on it, uh, you know, doing this bit coming through. But I'm wondering, is this going to get us a better result, like a more durable result that ages better than using the beetle on like a beading cable? Those of y'all with more experience than me in this, let me, or anybody with an opinion on it, or some input, um, let me know down in the comments, uh, which you prefer in your work, whether it's in your work or whether it's in something that you're buying. Because you do not have to make jewelry to be knowledgeable about what holds up and what doesn't. So just thread in on through and now while I'm doing this with the full intent of threading all the way back through to the center area because I do want a third wire or a third bead coming in through here and I've got a way <laughs> that I'm kind of interested in doing but we'll see I don't know if I can actually now that I'm thinking about it I don't think I can pull it off we're gonna have to just have it be independent there in the center but I think that'll be all right okay so now I'm coming here, there's one, two, three, four, sounds like somebody's digging a hole outside. Oh, it's the neighbors across the way, okay. So it's like, I love digging holes. <laughs> it is getting to be that time of the year though, you guys, like, I need to start some seeds. The little derpadiddles are poking their little faces up. No, daffodils are blooming is what that means okay and now I'm gonna do just a half hitch knot here up against because also I don't know what is an appropriate amount of like what's the minimum amount of binding off my ends I should do and what's overkill and what's ideal like you know what I mean so I'm still figuring that out and I figure I'd rather go with overkill than bare minimum but I'm just tying a little half hitch around our core thread. And then I'm going to thread few through a few more until I get to the next 6 millimeter bead. And then just coming through, flipping that over. Because I do think I like this better than, like, the, the actual experience of threading, you know, the string in the beads is a little more fun um, than with the beading wire, or, like, the beading cable. I don't know, it makes me feel like a real beater. It gives me some options, too, because now I'm finding myself coming through... Being like, well, do we come through and add the little swag with the beads? I think we do. Ooh wee, okay. And that'll justify having added all of this uh, beading thread on. What is it? Beading thread? Beading filament? Like, is there a difference? Like... It seems like there'd be a difference between the terms. The depth of my ignorance astounds me. I'm trying to make sure I'm not skipping any beads. I think I just skipped that one. Whoopsie. Some kind of 
backtracking a few beads. Yeah, I had skipped that one. And I did want to go with, I have a limited selection of beading thread. <clears throat> or floss? I don't know, what is this? Does it say? Braided bead thread. Okay, I'll call it thread. Um, I have a limited selection, but I wanted to go with something that... I, I wouldn't have used a hot pink. I mean, unless I wanted it as an accent. Just because I wanted it to match, you know, kind of the tone of the rest of what we're doing. Threaded back through there. And then threading back through. Just reinforcing, really, is all I'm doing here. Ooh, now that looks kind of neat. What if we joined those together? No, we'll stick to doing what we're doing, but... Maybe in future projects, I can get a little bit more wild with it. And one, two. So now we're exiting on our moon. <clears throat> and this will be something great to use these excess beads for. And so I think I'm going to do... Let's rummage out some teardrops. So I am really, really pleased with the whole experience of reorganizing my bead collection um, to where I have all my beads, like... Okay, so I have a selection of some briolet and teardrop. I'm gonna go with the flatter one, and I think we're just gonna do, like, three. Or let's do two, and then we'll do, oh, that'd look cool too. Just a little dagger bead. Let's do the dagger beads. So there's five of those. A little bit more hematite but I think it's going to, yeah, we'll go with the black just because I should have incorporated more hematite into the neckline. I would have liked that better. And I even, don't I have some, yes I do, I've got some little guys, so we've got two of the little ones and then three of the large, and these black dagger beads. And so I'm going to try to guesstimate out how much spacing I can do on this. Alrighty, so I'm going to pick up. One, two, three, four, five. That seems a nice round number. And then one, and then one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, how's that look? it's going to be about that much space in between <sighs> I think we'll go with three and have it be shallower so I'm still gonna do five and then the three millimeter steel bead but then I'm gonna do three of the 11 knot a dagger bead one, two, three, and then, yeah, the 3mm steel. One, two, three, dagger bead. Yeah, I think that's going to give us a nice little bit of distribution. No, we could use a little longer than that, couldn't we? Oh, bother. <laughs> 
I'm going to do four then. Thread that one on and four more. One, two, three, four. Heck, let's go for five. And then that center dagger bead. Yeah, I don't really feel like that's quite, that's way too bunched up by the, uh, by the moon. I wanted just a bit more space. So I'm just going to pull my thread backwards, pull the needle through everything as well. And this is why I'm experimenting, so then hopefully I can give y'all whatever design we come up with. So yeah, stick into the five, right from the get-go. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up, doesn't it? Four. Five. The steel. Five, three millimeter steel, one, two, three, four, five, dagger bead, oh shoot, <laughs> y'all, I hope I get better at this because I feel like I'm just terrible, I'm having fun though. <laughs> as much fun as a person can have stringing and unstringing and stringing the same beads. I'm learning though. And that's probably the most exciting part of all of this is every little stumbling block we come to is a learning opportunity. So don't get hustle, you know, huffy and hustled that not hustled, but like up in a tizzy that, you know, you're having to un unstring your beads again. Um, you know, it's, what did we learn? And now we know for next time. Yes, I like that. I think we'll see. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Threading on a three millimeter. One, two, three, four, five. I'm hoping this has enough weight to like hold itself down, like if that makes sense. To have a, a nice drape, I guess. One, two, three, four, five. Three millimeter. And there's one. I'm just gonna start using up all the little beads. Two, three, four, five. I feel like I'm in the final stretch of the project and I don't really feel like dumping out more beads just to have to put them away later. Okay, so now we got our short filler. And there's one, two, three, four, five, three millimeter steel, and one, two, three, four, and <laughs> I'm going to need these ones. So I guess I will go ahead and dump out some more beads. So it's three, four, and five. Okay. So now we're gonna thread back up through here. Boop. Pull nice and tight. I'm gonna see if we can't see. Eh. 
I still think it lays a little silly. I don't know though. It might be perfect. Let's see. Well, I'm gonna. We're through two of the beads, and I'm gonna thread through. One, two, through all those bigger decorative beads. Thread for two. And I'm going to thread back up through this way. And threading through our moon. So this whole world of beading is still so new to me. For as much as I've been working with beads for over a decade, um, for in wire wrapping and very, very basic bead stringing, which I would still consider this, what I'm doing here, very basic bead stringing. Like, it's not beading, like uh, bead weaving or, you know, any of the fancy beading patterns or Anything like that, it's just making lines with beads, but I still think it's lovely. Okay, so I'd like to travel continuing through here, and then when I exit right here, I was going to thread through But I also feel like I'm running a little low on wire or thread Let's tackle it anyhow. Needle isn't quite long enough to do the beads and the focal point. There we go. And I find that, um, my tension isn't quite what I would like it to be, and threading through multiple times, I feel like helps me um, get my tension a little bit more, well, tense, <laughs> you know, tighten things up a little. Okay. So we've exited our moon, so I'm going to come down, so there's going to be just a little bit of thread poking. Oh, that's very obvious. Okay. Nope, we won't be doing that. I'm going to be binding off the rest of this thread. Like, I'm just going to sew it through. Um, the remainder of right here. And then I'm going to stitch back down and through here, do some hitch knots and tie it off. So now I'm going to come through and I'm going to start by just threading on our moon. And I'm leaving about 8 to 10 inches of thread. And then we're going to go 1, 2, because these are the... Sh the We'll need the so shortest segment here because it's on the widest part of each of the circles. So there's one, two, I have a size 11, the three millimeter steel, the four millimeter bicone, three millimeter steel, and then one, two. Oh. There we go. And then we're going to just thread through. Oh, not quite enough room on the needle. So get those beads off there. There we go. Then pulling through, going nice and slow and controlled on pulling those beads through because we do not want to be running out of our tail, our thread, off to the side. And I'll show you what we're going to do that, do with that here in a sec. So now having exited the other side of our center focal point, we're going to go one, two, three millimeter steel. Four millimeter bicone, 
three millimeter steel and then one I'm thinking I might enjoy some extra long beading needles but I'm sure there's probably a whole bunch of pros and cons that come with those there we go getting that threaded on through and pulling that nice and tight and now from here I'm going to pick up a size 11 and we're gonna sew right back through that center part and now we can start actually adding a little bit of tension to this center line. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and pull. Again, pull in there. Okay. Let's get this through the center. And now I want to re-thread back through. All of those beads. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to... Yeah, get them on before pulling tight. Okay, and now from here... Going through the moon. Yeah, now that really lets us put some tension on. And I'm going to pick up another one of these, size 11. And I'm just going to feed back through. And again, we're able to add just a little bit of tension. I'm going to pull tight on that tail as well. And you guessed it, I'm just gonna thread through this center point again. So through those beads. It is so windy outside today. Here through the center. And it feels a little wild with these like little threads poking out here and there, but we'll get it taken care of. Then one, two. There we go. Oh, bumped the tripod, sorry. Gone through like that. Ooh, how lucky was that? It went right through our seed bead and everything. And now I'm pulling nice and tight, but we're just going to pull that down. And now I'm going to start adding knots. I'm going to do a hitch knot, like a half hitch, through here, which I'm just making a loop and then sewing back through it and being careful to make sure that that loop is falling at the same point where my thread is exiting. I'm just hoping that it'll help maintain its tension. I don't know if this is proper or anything, but I've never let that stop me from doing a craft before. So, well, that's not true. I get real scared about like metal smithing and anything where the materials are very expensive. I start to get hang ups and stuff. But uh, for stuff like beading, it's like a, if it holds together and it looks the way you wanted it to, then I think you did it right. Okay, so I'm going to do another knot here on this side. Probably my favorite way of doing it is just going ahead and getting the thread looped around the needle. Of course I say that, and now it's all like goobery and horrible. Um, there we go. And just... Yep, 
through there. And I'm actually going to snip this one right there. And I'm going to discard this little bit. And then we're going to sew in the other ends, same as what I did before. Um, just taking it and sewing it back through our work and then back through our work and I'll meet you guys back here. Okay guys, so this is how it came out and I'm pretty pleased with it with some key points that I, I wish I had done differently. This part here really needed some more weight to it. So I'm going to pretend like it's not there for a moment. And so having it be just like this made me pretty happy. So I'm probably going to go through and remove that drape down point. And then also here, if we, if this were sitting as a choker, um, but if it were sitting as a choker, the spacing would be fine, but I really should have done just one seed bead instead of three up on this top segment. That way, whenever it comes to lay, hey little doggy, yeah, that way when it comes to lay like this down around on my collarbones, um, it puckers just a little bit right there, which is not my favorite, but we are learning. Um, and I had a lot of fun making this with you guys today. I'm going to be doing a little bit more restringing on it, but that will be off camera. And then it's probably going to go into our booth for our upcoming vending event, Anime St. Louis, uh, in St. Charles, Missouri. You can find our schedule of events on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Um, everything's going to be linked down below. So like our social media, different things like that. But I had a lot of fun making these cabs and I had a lot of fun experimenting with some different or new to me techniques um, for how to make. And you can see how this part is like, uh. <laughs> it, yeah, very, very lightweight. I think it'd be perfect for some earrings though. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that this was helpful to you. Thank you to all of our channel members. Hey guys, and I will see y'all in our next video. Oh yeah, shameless self-promotion, somewhere of that. Um, if you like our cabochons and would like to get your hands on some of them, as well as support the creation of more free tutorials and get like craft along kits and stuff, be sure to check out our Happy Crafter Club. Links down in the video description. So I will see y'all next time. And until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> oh yeah. It's totally coming together.